There was a wise, old, and friendly man who was the head of a department of a great business. And a young man came to interview him one day to ask him some very important questions to learn about his great success. He said, sir, what is the secret? What's the secret to your success? Well, he said two words. Two words, right decisions. Wonderful. And how do we make right decisions? One word, okay, experience. Oh, and how do we get experience? Two words, wrong decisions. (laughs) In life, sometimes we're caught in that limbo place between right and wrong decisions, and even it's even worse where we're in this place where we don't make a decision at all. How many of you can say somewhere in the course of the journey of your lifetime, you've been in this place called limbo? And you may be there even now where you're saying, I don't know where to go, what to do. I'm stuck. I'm in this place. I'm not sure where to turn, where to go, and how to work through the circumstance that I'm facing. Now, we all hate limbo. I will tell you that. Illustrated by so many who were at the airport, they board a plane, excited about a destination they're going to, thrilled about the trip that's about to take place, and yet the pilot comes on board and says, "Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are number 62 for takeoff, and uh, you know, please enjoy uh, some wonderful snacks provided by our flight attendants, the gourmet pretzels and the uh, two ounces of beverage are being served for you that you might enjoy yourself while you're waiting in limbo. Oh, we hate that, don't we? We want to get somewhere. We want to go somewhere. We want to accomplish something. We hate to be in this place where we say, I'm not here, I'm not there, I don't know where I am. Well, let me tell you this. There's many people in our world who are in that kind of place spiritually. We're in a limbo place. I don't know where to go with God. I don't know where to go with my faith. I don't know what to do. I'm stuck. I'm in this place where I just don't, I want to believe and yet I don't know how and I'm just feeling in some ways that I'm getting nowhere in my great journey. And the unfolding of all the blessings that I so desire, well, they're not happening for me and yet I know that they're there for me and I'm stuck in this awkward place. Like that person or passenger on the plane, you're in that limbo stuck and you just say, oh, I dread this. I dread being in that no man's place. And so it is that life truly was not meant to be lived in limbo. Nothing in scriptures that says limbo, a state of indecision is our calling. In fact, there is never a moment in our life where we're to be in this state of indecision. Do I go here? Do I go there? I don't know where to go. I'm stuck. Nothing calls us to be in that place at all. Yet quite often we may find ourselves there, yet the Spirit of God is ever opening the doors, making way for us. Our hesitancy is, I don't know how to step forward. I don't know when to do. Am I true to listening to the Spirit's leading? Is this really what I need to do? And in that limbo questioning place, we find ourselves just like the text you read today, we find ourselves like a lame man. Now, you read this beautiful passage from Acts chapter 3. It's the story of a man who is brought to the gate called Beautiful every day. There he would sit, and in tradition, his means of income would be to ask for alms, for those coming to the temple would be in a spirit of generosity offering something, kind of like our do unto others offering, where, you know, you're at the gate, you think, oh, how can I bless someone or the benevolent needs of this world? How can I meet them? And it was that tradition that he would be outside there looking for some sort of assistance and the grace and mercy of those people of faith coming to worship, coming into the temple. The gate is called beautiful, beautiful. And we must not overlook some of the beautiful nuances that are written in a scriptural text that have true depth and meaning for us. Because the very entrance into the divine presence is always beautiful. Any entrance, any gateway, any place where we're coming to the place where we're coming into connection with God is the place called beautiful. And today, within your heart and life, there is a gate called beautiful within you. There is a place called beautiful within you. It is that place where you're going to make that connection with all the divine. How beautiful it is that the setting is set, that the layman is sitting just outside all the beautiful things that are ready to unfold that you might encounter as you enter in. 
Now here appears two disciples. Two disciples, and it's key that the story is written, that the scripture's unfolding with two key players, Peter and John. What do we know about Peter? Every time we hear the name Peter, it's always associated with the powerful word faith. Peter embodies faith, doesn't he? He's the symbol of faith for us. Faith that would say, I could get outside of the boat and walk on water. Faith that speaks out old times, proclaiming Jesus to be the Christ when asked, who do you think I am? Faith that speaks out constantly in so many moments, sometimes irrational, sometimes with power and truth. Peter is truly embodying faith. Then there's John. John, who is really the spirit of love and is the symbol of that for our lives. That is two great things that are so key speaking to us as we enter into the gate beautiful, as we enter into the presence of beauty, as we enter into God, as we enter into that wonderful place of truth and of knowing. What do we need to get through that gate? We need faith and love. Now he turns to the beggar, the lame man, and the lame man is saying, you know, give me some alms, give me something, would you give me something? And Peter and John say, silver and gold have I none, but what I have, I'm going to give unto you. What I have, and it begins with this, look at us, look at us. Now it's not so important that we spend time gazing at Peter and gazing at John, but we spend time gazing at what Peter and John mean for us. Gazing at faith, looking with love in every moment of our life. When we are pictured as the lame man, and I can't emphasize enough that when you read scripture, you are all of these characters. You are the lame man. You are the lame man when you're in those moments of limbo, feeling so disabled, inability to get up and walk or move or go forward, and you don't know what to do. You are that lame man, and you're pictured so beautifully there. And quite often we realize we're sitting just outside the gate, beautiful. We're right there, so close, but no cigar. We're just about there. You know, we're just outside that. What do we need to do to receive, to get in? to move forward, to get out of this place of I don't know and limbo that's so disabling that we don't know where to go forward with our faith. What do we need but to look, to gaze upon faith, to gaze upon love, two elements that are so crucial for our lives and our spiritual growth and development. How important it is that we embrace these because what we find here is that we may think that Everything is outside, but it's really inside where we discover all that we need, the truth that we need to move forward and to move in might and strength, to move in confidence and to move in assurance. You're outside the gate. How do we get inside the gate? When we realize this, that we, first of all, have to understand it's going to be inside the presence that we're going to find the answers that we need. Sitting outside the gate, we're always going to be looking for the physical world, the material world, to provide our answers. We're outside the spiritual. We're in that physical realm. And we think our means, like the layman, is could you help me? Could you help me? I need you. I need you. I don't know where to go. I'm, I'm stuck. I'm in limbo here, and I'm looking for other... Honey, all you need to do is enter into the presence. Come into the inside. Find it within. For us, we may think our strength and our solutions, our ideas and our wisdom is going to come from the outside world, but it comes from the inside, from the spiritual awakening, from that which is stirring within us. I love this passage from Psalm 121, verses 1 through 2. It says, I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. Now, we're not talking we got to gaze at Pice Peak or Mount Everest or the Rockies or the Smokies. I'm, it's symbolic. I will gaze. I will look up in a higher consciousness to an elevated place. I'm going to stop looking down at the circumstances and look at what is about to be revealed to me in the knowing, in the presence. I am moving my gaze. I am looking up. And what did John and Peter say? But look, look, look. Get your gaze up in an upward mode that says, I am thinking, I'm seeing, I'm visualizing. I am now viewing this higher consciousness 
I'm looking to the mountains and it says, from where shall my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Now, we're not talking that mountains are spiritual. Oh, yes, they can be wonderful places of revelation of God's beauty. But what that passage is saying is when we gaze at the higher country, when we raise up our view to the things of God, suddenly we begin to see our help, our strength, all that we need to move forward and make those right decisions to move out of that limbo, to get out of that place of being stuck, to move forward with great confidence. Peter and John spoke to the man who was expecting this handout and says, look, look, look. The first step in our spiritual awakening to get out of limbo is to number one, wake up and begin to focus on the things that are crucial for our lives. Our attention needs to be faced, focused, completely put on these powerful truths of love, faith, faith and love and working them together. What do we know as we talk over and over again that we talk about the intellect and the feeling. Do we not talk about that in a lot of our Emerson Theological Institute classes? You've all been learning this. About the intellect, the knowing coupled with the feeling. That you can know something, but if you don't feel it, it's just knowledge. And you can feel something, but you don't know what you know, what you feel. You can say, oh, I feel all good, but I don't know what I feel good about. You got to have the knowing and the feeling and you put that together and bam, that's the power of creative force within our prayers. When we know the promise and we feel the promise of God and we couple them together, wow, we're no longer disabled. We're no longer limbo. We're no longer beggars. We're no longer sitting outside the gate, but we found the keys to the entrance of the gate faith that says with God all things are possible that there are no limitations and so when you wonder where do I go left right what do I do how do I find the spiritual growth that I really want well in God all things are possible and there's no limitations for you so begin to step and move forward into the realm of no limitation into the realm of all things unfolding for you and stop putting down those limited, limiting words that speak out to your mouth. Stop uh, echoing them. Stop reinforcing them. Put them down. Set them away. And speak now with great faith. All things are working for my good. All things are possible for me. When we couple that kind of faith with this spirit of love and we look on it a love that says perfect love knows no fear from first john 4 verse 18 perfect love is what we are speaking it is fearless so you're wondering where do i go what do i turn what decision do i make well with great faith i know all things are possible and with perfect love i am not afraid i'm not afraid i can step out and I can move forward. I don't need to sit there questioning. I'm not afraid because God is unfolding the perfect wisdom for me. This call to action in this story is so powerful for us because then we find Peter and John saying that he will give them something that better than silver and gold in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Wow. In the character, in the way of Jesus, not so much that Jesus is a magic name. That's not what the verse is saying at all. It's saying when we move, when we speak, when we act in the very character of Jesus, who spoke and lived faith and love every single day of his life, in every action, every single thing he did, he did it with faith and great love. We've talked about this over and over again, all the Bible stories, and we look at them. Can you imagine Jesus standing before the crowd of multitudes of thousands who are hungry, ready to feed them, and being without faith, and being without love, and having just a few loaves and fishes, and then saying, oh, I don't have any faith, I don't have any love. Do you think any miraculous things would have happened? We know, we know, we know Jesus exuded. The character of Jesus is that every day I walk with these two things. The Peter and the John, shall we say, symbolized in my life. They're walking with me. Faith and love are walking with me. Every day they're walking with me. They're going with me in such a beautiful way that what's following behind is so gorgeous and wonderful that the experience of others who encounter you experience the miraculous and that they see you walking in spiritual confidence. 
The world is looking for that. They're looking for people of faith who walk in spiritual confidence, not in the state of limbo, wondering, but in a spiritual confidence that says, I know, and I speak this confidence. I live in this confidence. I walk in this confidence. I exude this confidence. Here we find that when you discover that you are able to embody the character of Jesus, suddenly you find a power to rise up and walk, to rise up and move, to rise up and no longer be in that state. You discover this power within yourself. You've been at the gate, the gate of spiritual understanding, sitting at this entrance, but it does you no good to sit at the door. You've got to go in. Years ago, I was struggling with my spiritual life and my own self-acceptance. I lived in Chicago, and I heard about a church that was affirming. It was called MCC. I knew that there was a small group meeting somewhere in Chicago, and I researched their address, and I went one night, and I stood outside the door, and I watched people going in, and I never went in. So close, so close. I didn't go in and I didn't encounter that wonderful love and message and power of inclusion and the spirit of, it, of welcoming everyone until three years later. Isn't it funny how often we can be so close, we're sitting at the door, but you gotta go in. You gotta go in to encounter it. Later on, when I did go in and encountered, I was in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I discovered this wonderful experience called MCC that was welcoming and affirming and inclusive that said this is a place where all are welcome and everyone is treated equally in the eyes of God. Wow, that was the beginning of a spiritual journey for me that was so powerful. I have to say this, that when we realize that we are in the way that Jesus set forth, from his teaching, in the character, in the name, when we move and live in that, we can be more than what this world says we can be. Something more can happen for our lives than what we might even think because we're moving in faith and we're moving in love. Every step is a step of faith. Every step is a step with love. For we become more than, and I love this, you become more than conquerors. Romans 8, 37 through 38 says this. In all things... We are more than conquerors, more than, not just a conqueror, but more than conquerors through God who loves us. For I am convinced, it says, that neither death, woo, nor life, woo, nor angels, oh, or rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate me from the love of God. I am more than a conqueror. For nothing separates me from the love that passes all understanding, the perfect love that is fearless, that endues a positive faith within me, that makes me and allows me to realize I could be more. I could be more. So it's not just that we're moving out of limbo. We're moving out of limbo now headed towards excellence. Spiritual greatness is ours. That's where we're headed. We're not just there in limbo for mediocrity to move to say, okay, I'm going to make a decision to be so-so. No, I'm making a decision to move forward, to step into through the gate beautiful to all that God has for us. Step out of the limbo stage, enter into the gate, and you do that with your very first decision. The decision says, I am moving in faith and love. I decide. I decide. And I begin to embrace the very purpose of life. And I begin to do it in such a way that I create and see myself in a new way. I'm not just spiritually disabled like I was sitting outside the gate or outside the door, confused and wondering. I'm not that kind of person anymore. I am now the very best version and the most amazing vision of myself. You have the right to do that, you know that. You have the right to start to claim and see the most amazing version of yourself, the best version of yourself. You're moving out of limbo and you're moving into the very promises. You're stepping in faith with love. You now have the power to say, I see myself at my highest and best. I see myself in an amazing place. I see myself understanding that the best version of me is there and I picture it. Let's do that. Picture the best version of you. What does it look like? 
What is the best version of you doing? What is the best version of you unfolding? What is the best version of you in this world today? And how is it touching the world and changing the world? Okay? Now think bigger than that. Okay? Step it up one more time. Come on, think even bigger because I know we think, oh, the nice person, I'll be good, I'll be, how about I'll be great? Oh, I'll be nice and I'll be, how about I'll be fantastic? How about, oh, I'll, you know, I'll have some good, how about every day is fabulous? How about we step it up to its highest and best because that's what's available for us when we get up and walk and the interesting thing about it is this lame man who looked with faith and love began to rise up and walk but even more than that he began to jump he began to leap he began to move in such a dynamic way he be wow can you imagine if you were that moving from limbo to now jumping wow can you imagine how amazing your life is when you begin to walk every day with faith and love at work in your life I have faith to believe. I have love to knowing that I can be fearless. I embrace all these things. I no longer can need to sit here. I don't even need to stand here. I need to jump here. I need to leap. I need to give glory to God in all ways. Amen? Amen. Well, that's what it's all about because are you doing great things? Are you moving forward? Why not? Why not? Why not? Because you have, to decide, you have to decide to let go of some things like your past or the ideas that you've had about yourself or your inabilities. I want to tell you this. Jesus said something very powerful that we need to capture and listen. Jesus said, go ye. Go ye. What does that mean, go ye? I'm going to tell you what it means. It's an acronym. <laughs> yes. G means get O means off, Y means your, and E means excuses. <laughs> get off your excuses. That's what you do. To get out of limbo, you get off your excuses. Because that's what's been holding you back all along. In your spiritual life, you say, I could do more for God. I know I can, but I can know I could be great. I could move forward in confidence, but I know there's great things that could be accomplished, but, and we begin to name excuse after excuse after excuse, and we begin to label them and cradle them and embrace them, and they become ours. Because let me tell you, Jesus said, go ye. Get off your excuses. How important it is that this moment is your moment right here and now to get out of limbo. You've been sitting at the gate too long. And I want you to welcome faith and love who are there right now speaking to you as if Peter and John were right there saying to you, Norma, look at us. As if faith and love are saying, Clarice, just look here. As if faith and love are saying, Roberto, get your eyes on faith and love in everything and in every way, and you will move out of limbo. You will walk, you will rise up, and you will jump, and you will leap, and you will move forward in confidence, and you will go ye in a way that it says, I am going forward with excuses no more. Amen. So if you want to walk upright... Welcome this new spiritual understanding. Leave your limbo behind today and let's be the people God has called you to be. Amen.